And what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Metal Hand of God podcast. I am your host, Wayne, and that gentleman over there along the shoreline, I think. Yeah, that'd be good. That's a good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah go. I'm along the shoreline. I'm the rum guy. That's right. He's the rum guy. And we I'm are. Like- we are the most dangerous podcast on the planet. Why are we dangerous? What makes us so dangerous? Because, man, we have like, we come in, we come in strong. You know what I'm saying? We drop, well, we, we, we drop we bombs, get from different motherfuckers. Too, you know, we drop bombs, motherfuckers. We, well, that, yeah. I mean, speaking nonsense. of which, speaking of which, I have a new T-shirt coming out uh, in the next couple months. It is, uh, <laughs> it's actually got a picture of uh, an a bomber dropping bombs with the letter F on it. So dropping the F, oh. drop Imhog dropping the F bomb since I believe I put on there 2006. I think, That's nice. Yeah, yeah. I think, am I right by saying 2006? Oh, no, no, Jesus, no. Dude. I didn't, oh, I didn't, no. I didn't put a date yet. But no, 2006 would be when, when the podcast, not the podcast, but when the, uh, when we all met, uh, was in 06, yeah. 05, 06. So that's um, the beginning of time. You can just yeah. say that. Uh, the podcast is what seven years old. So roughly, what is that? I'm terrible at math. You know that. So it, like, it, over uh, three years. So like two thousand <laughs> <laughs> your dick. Uh two thousand thirteen. Math. Two thousand thirteen, yeah. I think that's MHOG it. means math. Two thousand so I gotta remember which one we're gonna use yet. I don't know what date we should put on there. We should put on like the actual Imhog birth date. Yeah, just just find the first episode or the second first episode, should I say, yeah. since the first one was lost. The first one's yeah, it's definitely God, I wish it. we could find that first one. It's gone, dude. It was it, complete crap, but it was fun. It was weird because there was like so many people on that show. Like, well, you know, it's it's interesting because we we came into the game of podcasts not long after, um, it really really started picking up steam. I mean, yeah, there was a lot of people. Like after we got in, like a ton of people had shows. Yeah, I was like, was, wow, man, what the fuck. But we were doing it like grassroots shit, man. We didn't we didn't walk yeah. into this with professional recording equipment and shit. Like no, that. we had we had fucking like little plugs that I plugged into the 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 dash of the computer, and like we all huddled around this motherfucker and talked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It and was I, I fucking was, terrible, man. My fucking I, I had a converted uh, uh, microphone. Um, what the hell was I using for a microphone? Oh, it was for uh, Xbox. It was the Rock Band microphone you used. Ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, hey, and on top of that, on top of that, when none of us had headphones, no. so the echo was fucking tremendous. It was so it's beautiful. it's funny to listen to those old episodes because you know what's what's good is the the transformation of what it was to what it is now. I can't say if it's gotten better, <laughs> well, I but mean, it's it, it's gotten great. more mature. Like mature. Uh, by mature, yeah. I mean like the sounds better. On, yeah, a ca- on occasion, on occasion, the sounds better because of the fact that we have to deal with we're at the mercies of Skype and and things like that, so we right. really can't deal with that kind of stuff. But you know, I mean, we're better at you know talking to people. We're better at what we really want to put out on our show. We kind of we kind of know our our craft, and like like we've like Adam always said, we're a really good fucking show. It, it's just what the fuck was that? Do you have an idea? Because that sounded awesome. Hmm, maybe. Let me. This see. is one of those things. That... What the fuck <laughs> is that? What is going on? I don't know. There's a magical fairy in your studio right I like, now. I don't know uh, where all these little beeps and blunders are coming from. I mean, I got a little <laughs> thing that came up that said, Imhog, hey. I'm like, what the fuck is that for? Oh, you must be getting messages through Messenger across your computer. I don't think so. No, I'm not on logged in or anything. This is fucking yeah. stupid. Anyway, yeah, yeah, anyway, like Adam's always has said, we're a really good show. It's a shame that we're not really picked up by anybody yet. But, you know, it's it's okay. I mean, it's okay. I, I still love doing what we do and You know, but you what's know? even crazier is the the amount of following we do have for not being picked up by I know anything major. We we really made this a grassroots effort and really came through strong and uh uh, despite what a lot of people think, we do have a decent, a really decent listener base. And uh, we want to thank everybody for uh, hanging in with us and all the new people that have joined us. I noticed on Facebook and all the other pages, we have gotten uh, so many. There we go again. Fairy again. There we what go the again. What is you this? You figure that out. Um, 
but uh, yeah, we've gotten a lot of new listeners, uh, new people interested in a lot of the new segments we've got coming out. Yes. Um, uh, one of them is um, uh, what uh, Wire. Uh, Wire's got a great new segment, which we'll be uh, talking about here. Uh, it's Shortly. Called, yeah. yeah, it's called Pot Thoughts. And uh, I don't know if uh, for those who don't uh, know Wire, uh, he's in the world of uh, the marijuana world. I mean, he's out yeah. there uh, doing wire, his thing. Wired is Wire is our one of our friends. We've I've actually me and him were talking recently, and we've uh, we've all been knowing each other since 2006. Um, Wire, we've never met Wire personally though. Like I've been knowing the guy for a, like I said since 2006. That's a long fucking time to know somebody. It's 13 years, you know. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we've all been hanging out on Xbox Live, and Wire's ex military. You know, he's a military mm-hmm. guy, uh, but he's also in, like, he, he uh, was a pot farmer. He does uh, work for medical marijuana people, and, you know, he's heavily into the marijuana mo- the movement. Yeah, the culture and stuff, and, and he's a fucking awesome dude. I mean, he's always been a really cool guy. We've always, you know, I say we hang out, but we've, I, I mean, honestly, I've hung out with Wire online for hours like we've all yeah. sat there playing games for hours so it's like it's weird to say that we've hung out but we have i mean literally it's like talking to your brother that you've never met i mean you know each other pretty well <laughs> and, and he's he's now uh becoming a a part of the mhog family in this aspect yeah as well. and it's, it's about time different. because like we've always wanted to get him on the show we've always in fact he was actually on that that first episode that never aired isn't that messed up? It's he, been that long. Man. He was on that fucking show. And, yeah. you know, it, it never aired because we were fucking retarded and it sounded like horse shit. <laughs> but uh, he's got some great insights on that, on the, on the world there and on and that culture. And, uh, you know, that it's what was taboo has now become um, a bit more mainstream. I mean, they're still fighting over it and there's still debates about it, whether you like it, whether you don't like it, but, uh, the, uh, the, the, the marijuana world, man, it, it's here. It's been here for a long time, but just becoming more mainstream. Right. And he's got some great insights on that stuff. And, uh, a little bit of history too. I think in this in this show, he's uh, this segment he's going to be doing. Yeah, yeah. Like, which is really kind of cool is is the aspects behind what he's doing is not like it's not going to be like a Cheech and Chong segment. Well, it may be sometimes. Who knows? You know, I you know what what wire he's fun. Uh, but like he told me, he's going to try to do some stuff where it's like stories behind the marijuana industry, and then he wants to do kind of like a product review, like pipes and and actual products and then and then on our and on his page like the new the new uh segment page pot thoughts go check it out uh go like it uh he's actually putting up recipes as well yeah the recipes are actually very cool because <laughs> is that not awesome there's a lot of cbd oil stuff that you can get nowadays and uh um it'd be interesting to try it out because these are actual real recipes right I mean, you can you can consume this stuff and and it's safe and you can do it and it's all it's all good. yes that's pretty cool you know like that's a new aspect that we're adding to the show uh we know that you know our brothers kyle and kevin are heavy into that area too so it'd be really cool to have their insight on as well maybe you know wire we get wire to show at one of them one time and see what they can come up with that'd be fucking cool you know maybe if the if the world got a bit more into it we wouldn't have as many problems as we do today who knows hallelujah i believe that 110 percent, man do you think you think this is a good time to to air that segment? I think it might be. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we like to bring to you all you smokers and all you hip cats. I don't know if that's a cool term. I thought it was. Really, I thought it was. It was, funny. It was, it was pretty wide, yeah. But that's we'll, we'll go with. No, but wasn't it funny? Like I'm trying to do that, like you know, 1960s. Uh, uh, what does they call them? Not a bebop. What they call those? Beat, fo- beatniks. Beatnik. That's it. Beatnik yeah. guys. You know, yeah, guys. Here we go, guys. You know, up next to the microphone, you know what I'm saying? I'm bringing my boy, my man, the man himself, Wire Dog, with his this pot is like thoughts. The apex of Check the it vortex out. of joint engineering. Pop, <coughs> oh, you fucking up the rotation. Pop, pop, yeah. Pop, pop, yeah. 
drowning deaths from the substance alone? Alcohol kills 88,000 people a year. Tobacco kills 480,000. And marijuana kills absolutely no one. Uh, according to curriculum, marijuana can get you hooked on harder substances. It's a gateway drug. Yeah, educators have been saying that for years, but it's not true. It's time to sit down and get inspired by a man on the mic that we call Raya. Let's listen up and learn fast. It's Pot Thoughts, where we learn about that weed, that kush, that grass. Pot Thoughts. Wire. Hello, M Hawk family. Welcome to Pot Thoughts with Wire Dog, coming to you from Humboldt County, California, in the heart of Redwoods. That's right, Ewok land, where weed is king and everyone grows. Pot Thoughts is brought to you by weed. Now let's go out and smoke some. Today's topic, how pot farmers saved a small town from total retardation. Then in our product review, we review Manzanita and Madrone's The Fizz, cannabis-infused lemon-lime drink. And we'll reveal to you the strain of the month. Now let's get into it. How Pot Farmers Saved a Small Town from Total Retardation The town of Blocksburg, California was founded in 1890 and it was the first major stop on the stagecoach line coming into Humboldt County. And redwood logging and dairy farming was real big up until the 50s and 60s when they moved everything a little further north and the town the town's population had dropped to only just a few families and uh, by by the 70s the uh, population was so small that there was only a few families left in this town to where there were some genetic defects happening in this little valley town. So it wasn't until the 80s when the pot farmers started moving up here uh, and actually adding new genetic lines to these families and it actually saved the valley from becoming totally inbred. Now next let's take a look at Manzanita and Madrone's The Fizz Cannabis Infused Lemon Lime Soda. There's 5 milligrams of THC for the 12 ounce bottle. And uh, it contains CO2 extracted cannabis oil infused in sparkling water with cane sugar. And uh, let's give it a try. Hmm. It tastes like lemon lime soda like a a sprite or a or a you know seven up uh you can kind of taste the weed a little bit um tastes a little more like there's honey in it yeah it's uh it's quite good i would recommend it for anyone beginning in the uh you know edibles and, uh, you know, just starting out and smoking and whatnot, they should definitely try this out. Next is our strain of the month. Our strain of the month is chocolate hashberry. It's a 22% THC, and it's from Brennan Mountain Farms. The nose on it is really sweet, really, really floral. It's got good, solid, hard nugs, and uh, nice and frosty looking. Really, really enjoy the smoke on this. It's really nice and flavorful. I definitely recommend it as the strain of the month. So, guys, check out our Pot Thoughts Facebook page where we'll be posting our product reviews and also the strain of the month. We'll also be having 
the pot recipe of the month posted there so make sure you check that out and uh, so thanks for turning into pot pots and remember the grass is always greener in the other guy's basement back over to you Wayne don't forget to check us out next time Thanks for listening to Pop Thoughts with Wire. Don't bogart this shit, man. You want to share with your friends. So that was Pot Thoughts by Wire Dog. That was awesome, actually. He did a good job on that, man. He did. And you know, he was really, really like like um how you call it? He was nervous about doing it because he's like I had to he did he wrote down a bunch of shit and well, he Yeah, that's a good way to do it. You know. Well no, I know it was. I'm just I'm just telling you, it's like the way he was he was preparing, I was like, dude, this is awesome. Like he's really excited. It was really cool. I'm glad I'm glad he's finally a part of this whole show. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And uh, we know we got uh actually uh, you know, I talked to um Scott. Remember old Scott? Yeah, Scotty. Yeah, Scotty doesn't know. Yeah, our buddy Scott, who lives in uh used to live in Dallas, now I think he's in Austin. Um yeah. he uh I talked to him recently and he's been going through a lot of bullshit too. So he's finally getting back on on his feet and doing good stuff. And nice. so I offered uh, him a uh, segment on our show, of course, because that's what we do. We offer segments to friends because we love you and right. and because they're all actually part of the MHOG video game world, which not many of you people know about because you haven't come to play with us. It's true. But, I mean, we're, we're more than just gamers. You know, we're, we're, we're other people, too. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, back to Scott. But yeah, so I offered him a thing, and he told me to call him this weekend. So I'm going to call him this weekend and see if we can discuss it. Cool. Uh, cool, cool. I think I think he's going to be doing uh, since he does work for the big GS, uh, which is uh, GameStop. Oh, he's been there a while. He has, and he he goes to all these like uh, um, special events and things that they put on. So like like the Olympics, special yeah, Olympics? special. Oh, he's the champion of the special Olympics. Pole That's vault, nice. especially pole, pole vault, vault. But yes, he uses. I, his, I can see him doing that. He uses yeah. his dick. Oh, yeah. Um. Yeah. Don't trip. No, he tries not to, but you know, yeah. he's don't. Yeah. He's the man. Uh. Go. But yeah. So he's gonna. I think he's gonna do us a um a game segment, which will be really cool because it's something we don't have yet. Yeah. I mean, that would be good because it, you know the game world's changing like every month, so it's it's good to hear what's coming out, what's new, what you know. And he has the pulse. Thing. Like he has his fingers inside the pulse. Like. It, like that's he, not where his fingers are i know it's up the ass but he can still feel the pulse <laughs> it's he can a, still it's feel the a, pulse for your asshole it's more of a contraction than a pulse whatever anyway he, enjoy, <laughs> he enjoys that he enjoys that but uh what else is new man this is it's been a it's been a crazy mixed uh, up fucking week i've been having some really bad issues lately man like i'm what? not i'm not trying to like be a downer but wow um <laughs> i've been having some issues with my my throat um, what are you doing? I suffer from uh, GERD or uh, acid reflux, if you have, that's what you want to call it. Sure. And um, the acid yeah. reflux has actually scarred my voice box and is causing me to have the feeling of a like uh, baseball stuck in my throat. Um, it's not fun. No, it sounds horrible. Uh, I have to um, like not talk a lot which is what I'm doing now, but that's okay because this is what I like to do. Uh, I have to, you know, rest my vocal cords all the time. I have to do all this stuff, but it, it may not go away. You know what'll, um, what'll help that? Don't say it. Please don't be, don't, don't say cranberry or dick. Oh, I wasn't going to say either one of those. Okay, good, good. Go ahead. But it's weird. Those two things popped in your mind. I, don't know. I was going to say whiskey. Uh, actually, they tell you not to do that. Well, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Well, the reason they tell you not to do that is because uh, the alcohol base causes the stomach acids to pump more. So it causes more reflux. Actually, whiskey helps my acid reflux. Everything. Whiskey helps you with everything. Whiskey in the jarro. Yeah, yeah. 
so yeah that's that's my issues i gotta make a doctor's appointment which sucks because i don't have insurance so it's gonna cost me a lot of it's, money it's overrated man insurance you don't win with it it mm. sucks it sucks ass u.s insurance blows yeah it's i just, agree i agree i mean the only the only people that really helps are people who can get it for free yeah exactly and, and i can't get it for free um it's got a so, job that's the problem yeah and unfortunately my job doesn't offer you know insurance sucks but you know they can't do it because of the obamacare stuff and even if it did it wouldn't hard. cover as much as you needed to cover man you're right you're right but at least it would be something you know unfortunately i have to go and pay full price for all this stuff uh i do know that a a uh a a um a scoping what i need it you know what i need done is mm-hmm. is anywhere between uh 15 and uh 2500 dollars which you could just call rotor rooter and they they scope toilets and drains and stuff i'm sure right, they could do your right food. right which i won't be doing you know anytime soon oh, okay what well, was an option not rotor rooter i mean getting the, the scope oh the scope yeah well, yeah. think Rotor Rooter. Well, actually, I could just call a veterinarian that I know and say, "Hey, man, would you fucking stick that scope down <laughs> and check me out? <laughs> Take some pictures." I mean, I mean, there's really unless it heals, there's nothing. And scar tissue doesn't go away if it's scarring. Uh, so, there is things that they do now. Uh, they this is going to sound so perverted and sick, and I'm glad. Uh, I'm, I'm so at, glad you're bringing it up. I'm glad Adam's not on this episode. Uh, but they do um, occasionally do st- throat stretching. Seri- okay, I'll, try not, I'll try not to laugh. I, I know, I know, I know. But it's it's serious. I read I read it, and uh, okay. actually, Caitlin's grandmother has to have it done every oh, every year and a half. That sounds absolutely awful. Yeah, well, they go in and they basically try to clear out some of the scar tissue, and then uh, open your esophagus up, like wait, with some like balloons, you know, put it down there and. Swell it up. Oh, well, that doesn't sound too bad. Yeah, I'm sure you're out for that. Uh you have to be, yeah. Yeah. Because you have be... to have uh they have to have a breathing, you know, tube stuck down you somewhere. Sure. sure. Well, I mean it sounds... doesn't sound it doesn't sound like a, a, a too bad of a thing that I can I I wouldn't mind getting it done if it would stop this aggravation and pain, you know? Mm, yeah, I do. Yeah, because I've I've got the uh the reflex myself and I'm I've had it for a long time, but I guess I get. I mean, yours sounds pretty bad. So yeah, it's awful, dude. It's really, really yeah. bad. Well, let's let's get up on a happy topic. Tell me something happy, bro. Uh, Seriously. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, that's yeah. what you got for. That's what I got. That's what I got. Uh, I watched a a funny movie last night. I watched Tag. Do you remember when Adam was talking about that on the show? Oh, is that that f- fucking movie where they just run into into tag? It's like a thirty year long yeah. game of tag. Yeah. yeah, it was actually pretty good. It was funny. I enjoyed it. The, the ending was kind of sad, but it was still good. Huh. See, the only thing I've done is uh, I finished watching uh, twenty seasons of Midsummer Murders. That's cool. That sounds like a good show. It was. It was. You know, not bad if you're into BBC shit. I like the BBC stuff. Big Black Cock. Yep, I knew it. No, not that. Not that. Don't dig that. You know, they were trying to say that BBC is racist. Like, not the British broadcast channel, but the term Big Black Cock is racist. And I don't understand I don't understand why that's racist, because if the I, guy... I don't understand why that's even a thing. But, what, I mean, what, if the guy's got a Big Black Cock, you know, it, why would it... You know, would he want to say it out loud the whole time? Well, well I just don't understand. <laughs> I don't know why we're having this conversation. One. I don't, I don't either. Two... The, that's just fucked up right i think you made it up i no, i didn't i i think you made it up type it in on your phone i'm not typing that in my phone <laughs> say is bbc racist I'm and not, it's gonna come I'm up with even, big black cock that is never going into any of my browsers well actually i was i was on twitter and and i just so happened to see in my like when i went to search and and you know how when you go in the i don't know if you have it you have a twitter feed don't you I do, but I haven't seen it in two years. So right. I have no idea. Well, anyway, when you go into search, they they give you like things they recommend you looking at or or like stuff, and it was like, it was Why like, were they recommending that to you? Yeah, I know. No, it was it was um it wasn't that. It was like some woman bitching about the terms, and that was one of them on there saying because I always look at the news to see, you know, what new crazy racist bullshit they pulling out of the world, you know, 
and and yeah. that and that was like really BBC is racist because I thought they were actually talking about the British broadcast system and I was like I mean broadcast channel I was like oh, all right let me check this out no, no, I'm, I'm more familiar with BCC what's that that's bulbous Caucasian cock oh and I yeah yeah I I pretty blah, pretty sure you were yeah, familiar I'm sure, with that yeah. one. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't get that out. Again, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I have a little trouble talking, you know, with this fucking bullshit going on. Oh, it's funny. Anyway, <laughs> that's that's weird, dude. Yeah. No, but uh, yeah, I like the BBC TV. Speaking of BBC, uh, we yeah. want to throw out some uh, good wishes, positive vibes, and uh, all that good shit to one of the to uh, family our, members. Yeah, to our big black cock. And it's, <laughs> and it's not and it's not it's not Kevin or Kyle, even though we love those guys too. I, no, he's he's a BCC. It's uh, it's Mad Mark Flanagan. He's having some uh, surgery. Um, no, he had surgery. He's, well, he's out. He's, 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 this is ongoing. This is the one or two. He got more times probably to go. I don't know. Oh uh, look, look. He had his head ripped open today, and now he is fine. I don't know if he's fine, but. Let's hope it's a last. He was posting stuff on the internet, so obviously he's not. Uh, it was all backwards. So he's I'm not, not sure what he was saying. Yeah, he's not retarded, but um, well, I mean, he may be. How about no. this? He's not more retarded. Is that is that a is that a the, way? The to rest say of it? us, no. I think he's probably the more sane one. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, yeah, he's 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 had a hard time of it, and uh, uh, we want to wish him some. Uh, yeah, we love you, Mark, man, and we really really hope you're doing okay, man. Uh, um, I. I Glad to see you were kind of smiling with that grimace look on your face with your head wrapped up like a fucking mummy. But dude, I, I feel your pain because yeah, that's yeah, not, yeah. Not bad. To, I looked very similar. Just think of rum. Just think of rum. You know, at least yeah. yours will heal rums. They'll be crooked eyed, stupid. Uh, yes, but I got a, I got a BCC. BBC. I was about to say a BCC. Yeah, no, it's a B <laughs> BCB. You said or something like that. I don't remember what the fuck you said. <laughs> But uh, brown, yeah, man. brown, bulbous he, cock. Yeah, but he's got uh, he's got a great uh, great family there. He's got, he does. Uh, he's uh, he's in the band uh, Skin Little Damage. If you haven't heard them, you need to check. He's them also out in a sure. black metal band that I cannot uh, tell you their name to save my Did, life. Uh, it's it's a black a, metal band. I think they're called the Al Jolsons. Uh, no, 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 no. That's racist. Is it? It is. Al Jolson oh. was a racist bastard. He no, he was a he was an entertainer back in the day. Um, he he was an entertainer, but he was also a racist. Well, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. Um, Times change. It may not have been racist back then, but it could be racist now. Yeah, true. I mean, look, I'm going to tell you this story, okay? And and this is an interesting story. Uh, okay, I'm going to sit down then. Um, I'm trying to find Mart's other band real quick. Why why are we talking? But look. So so I go we go to we go to Walmart, right? Okay. And uh I found out online that there is a new cereal coming out and it should be out pretty soon uh, or if it's not out now, it's called uh chicken and waffle cereal. Okay? That's not, that sounds awful. It does sound terrible. Don't get me wrong, but I really wanted to try it. Of course you did. All right, you know, you know how I am. I always want to, you know. Well, this looks horrible. I gotta try it. Yeah, exactly. You know me. Yeah. I'm, I'm always yeah. into something fucked sure. up, and I want to try different things. Yeah. So I was like, "Well, I gotta find this." So I'm looking around the store, and I don't see it. So there's this black guy who's working at the store, you know. And, and no, and, no, you're not going there. Yeah, and Caitlin got. She was like, "Don't go. Don't do it. Do not ask this guy for that." And I was like, why? I mean, every person that works at Walmart in, in that area is is either black, brown, or Asian. So if I'm going to find this cereal, I have to ask somebody, right? So I just wanted to do it. I was like, hey, man, do you know if you guys are going to get the chicken and waffles cereal? And he sat there for a minute. He goes, I'm not sure. Let me go. Um, let me go see if we have any back because we got a big pallet in the back of different things. And I'll go check. So, okay, cool. So he goes in the back and he comes back. He says, no, nah, man, I, we don't have it. He says, but we're going to have another, you know, a big pallet of shit coming in this week if you want to come back and check. I said, okay, Sounds cool. appetizing I already. Like, I appreci- shit. You know, I was like, appreciate it, man. Thanks. He goes, I said, you know, I'm always looking for weird stuff. He goes, yeah, they had this one cereal that was out. It was the Sour Patch Kids cereal. I said, no shit. He goes, yeah. And he said, they sold out pretty quick, so it's not around anymore. I said, oh, that's good. So I told him to have a good day. 
and walk off. Caitlin was so pissed off at me. She called me a racist because I, I asked this guy for a cereal. And I was pissed because I'm like, I'm not a racist, man. But I can't help it if the black guy's working in the cereal department and I need to fucking find the cereal that I want. It's not like I went up to him and said, hey, do you have the uh, nooses O's with the little black guy, Sambo? Really? Little, really? You went with that? Little, <laughs> little black Sambo marshmallows? You know, I didn't say that. I mean, it is an actual product. I didn't fucking, you know, make a racist make comment right, or but- anything. And, and and I was like, I was just thinking to myself, you know, me and me and the wife are such on different levels, like as in, you know, generation wise, like she's, you know, millennial, you know. she's a millennial. So she's just kind of like, that's fucking racist. You shouldn't be saying those things. And I'm going, it's not racist. I want to eat this fucking cereal. What the fuck am I supposed to do? I have to yeah. keep my mouth shut. Just because I have to wait to see it on the shelf. No, I want this fucking cereal. That's so funny. So yeah, so I, I never, I, I never gave that much thought. I mean, when you, when you've got, uh, you know, uh, a little bit of an age difference, you know, that little bit can make a big difference. Oh yeah, ways. yeah, yeah. And then, and, and you know, it's not really a little bit, man. It's seventeen years. It's it's well, a it's a pretty big I, jump. I was trying to I was trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. No, no, know? no. I understand and I appreciate that. But I'm just saying it is a, it is a is a decent jump. And I mean I can understand where she was coming from. But to honestly accuse me of being a racist of all people, I mean I'm not Adam. I mean you know it's. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, it's not, uh, it, I'm not trying to be a shithead or anything. I was just being honest. I just want this fucking cereal, man. Well, yeah, speaking of generational and stuff, um, the differences, I was watching, um, some shit on YouTube. You before know? you, before you finish that, I cannot pronounce yeah. Mart's new band, but it is D E U S. Deuce, I'm guessing that is. Deuce. Dos. M O R I. Mori. Dos Mori. Dos Mori. That's this is a black metal band. If you want to go check them out, they're fucking great. If you're into black metal, that is the band to go see. I liked In Living Color. So I did too. I did too. I was a big, big fan of uh, those guys, and I really liked when uh, Public Enemy worked with Anthrax. That was nice too. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, uh, the uh, no, I was that, watching these YouTube videos. That right? was racist, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching YouTube videos and it was um a bunch it was like teens um uh, teens reacting to songs of the nineties, you know, and songs of two thousand or just regular bands and stuff. And I'm sitting there going, Well and that, they're like, I've never heard this before. I'm like, How the fuck have you not heard of these bands before? Like, and I mean they're just bands as you know, like in sync, um uh Amy Winehouse, Guns and Roses. You know, I'm like, well, how have they not heard this shit? Right. And I, I'm really thinking about it going, well, fuck, dude, these kids are, I mean, they're teens. So, I mean, they, they missed it a lot of different music. I'm not saying it was all great music. Don't get me wrong. The nineties was pretty shitty when it came to a lot of music, but um, they missed out on all these bands uh, and they wouldn't hold interest to them now. You know, I mean, but these are still bands you don't hear on like, quote unquote, the oldies channel. So th- it, there's a lot of music from our our genre our, our our time coming you know coming up. Oh yeah, that that uh, isn't quite hit the quote unquote oldies genre yet, but it's right in between. Right. And I'm like, well, where does that fall? I mean, it's not classic anything. Is it it's, classic pop? Is that a new thing? It's pretty classic pop. Yeah, it's pretty fucking weird because like, uh, uh, like I was listening to the radio the other day and fucking system of a down yeah came on the classic rock station like chop suey or something yeah and i'm going fuck you're Aerials. right i was like that shit's probably almost 20 years old holy crap you know i'm like yeah yeah that's really insane, man it's, dude. it's insane yeah it was uh what was it um they they didn't know who uh lincoln park was they didn't know what it was just it was just you know maybe that's a good thing but in the same sense well, it's just bizarre to me I'll put it you like this, man. I didn't like Linkin Park's music, but Chester, the the singer who killed himself, was yeah. he was one hell of a singer, dude. Like that, oh, he was a great singer. That Very guy well. really, really, you know. I liked I liked certain songs they put out. They were one of those bands where you like a song, but not enough to buy a whole album. At least for me, it's like I like these two songs. Well, I'm not. It's not going to justify me to go spend twenty bucks on a CD. 
ain't going to happen, you know, or, you know, I may spend the 97 cents on an iTunes download, but that's about right. It. Right. But, um, then that's another weird thing. I think that has really screwed everything up with, uh, with music too, is, um, we've given so much control to these streaming services for music that, um, I think that's where a lot of bands are losing money too. Now that I think about it, like, you know, I, I don't have to download the whole album. I can download two songs. Well, why the fuck are these guys putting out 18 songs, you know, on an album? Right. You know, and only two of them are any good. I mean, they just, you know, fill in their quotas, I guess. You know, it's like, okay, I know I got one hit on this album. The rest of them, eh, someone may like them. Right. You know, it's, it's a crapshoot. But, um, yeah, you almost you almost kind of say your wish for those bands. It's just like you almost have to be forced to buy the whole album to get that song, you know, because that's what we used to have to do. We could never just go buy one song unless you got a cassette single. Remember those like one song on one side, one song on the other. Yeah. I mean, it was badass in the day. I was like, yes, I didn't have to buy the whole crappy ass album. I've got this cardboard sleeve with a shitty cassette in it, you know, but, and then you'd like record it and make copies of it. And then you trade that single with somebody else. And then you could get another, and just make your own mixtape of better songs. <laughs> but uh, uh yeah man it was just it was just really bizarre to me to see all that stuff on youtube and these kids don't know shit about these bands i'm like holy fuck and what's even worse is i know about their music isn't that fucked up it's supposed to be some point in my life where i'm supposed to stop listening to what they're listening to yeah like now yeah well maybe but i don't i think you, need you know to. You i'm freaking to. i'm jamming out to k-pop I'm driving down the road. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, whatever. One direction. Fuck. Yeah. I'm just going to, you know, that's just what I do. You know, that's what I listen to. You know, that's my, you know, they used to be, I used to hide that. I used to like, no, I don't listen. To yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I listen to everything. I listen to metal. I fucking, I fucking listen to skeletal damage and, right. and Slayer right, and freaking Demi Lovato and all those bands. You know, I, yep. I don't care. I mix and match, man. I'm like a, I'm a cornucopia of musical knowledge. Yeah, I like a lot of stuff too, man. Like a lot of this newer stuff that I didn't, I don't know who they are, but yeah. I, I enjoy some of their stuff. I, I like a lot of EDM stuff. I, I really dig uh, a lot of electronic music. Uh, it just, it's, it's very cool, man. It's very synthy. It just puts you in a good, good state of mind. Uh, it's good for the brain vibes. You know, it's, it's, uh, music is. Music is, you know, my weed. You know, I yeah. listen to that to, to relax and chill out. If I had weed, man, it would be all <laughs> over. I'd be like fucking in a, I'd be like two months coma. That'd be it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm, I'm awful at that stuff. I always was, man. I'd stare at a fucking wall for six hours, you know, just chilling out. Like, oh, look at that doorknob. A you, lot. You don't do that now? No, dude. I, I, fuck, I can't afford weed anymore. I, I remember when you were sitting on that boat. I don't remember that at all. Staring off into the water. I remember you trying to shoot a fish with an air pellet gun. I did. I did. I, I will. I will admit to that. I tried to murder fish with a fucking pellet gun. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing funnier than to see Wayne with his gangster lean. I was like, out I the got, middle of a stream. Well, like I'm gonna. I was seconds. like, I'm gonna shoot this motherfucker. Guess and what? He, I never shot that motherfucker. You never did. You never. You never got one of them. And then you look over at me and go, "You cool?" I'll be like, "Yeah." What did I say? <laughs> what did you Syn say? Sy synthetic my ass. Yeah, that's what you kept screaming at us. Synthetic my ass. <laughs> as you uh, were, as you were like bouncing back and forth on the. That was good. Good days. It's a day. Yeah, that was a whole fucking three days of fucking misery. You know what else has changed besides music and fucking kids not knowing shit? Is your um, penis? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no. No, uh, it, it's it's still <laughs> loose as fuck, huh? I hear you. Uh, the uh, the whole the whole scene when it comes to entertainment on TV, like uh, right. it's like like wrestling. Wrestling's changed, man. It has actually, and I, you know what? It's funny is I watched it last night for the first time in a long time. Uh, you know, one of our our buddies who does uh, Heroes and Heels, um, the uh, what does he call himself on the show? The fucking not oh, the, it's Tricky Ricky and the Enforcer. Enforcer, yeah, the Enforcer uh, has the uh, WWE Network, and he let me uh, he watched the uh, Royal Rumble off his network, which was really man, that's awesome. Which I was seen that in years exactly. So I was kind of like, let me watch this shit, man. 
and you know, I, did, I only knew like a couple of names of these people that were coming yeah. out, but it was it was fun. It was big. It was like you know, the extravagance bigger, to this shit bigger is, than life. It's crazy. I did remember one guy who walked out. His name was Jeff Jarrett. Do you remember Jeff Jarrett? I do remember him. He's old as fucking dirt, but he came out and did the rumble. That is so freaking cool, man. But um, yeah, you really know what? Awesome. Uh, they those two guys seem to know a lot about wrestling. And uh, I, think I, think, so. I think we've got a, a segment of theirs, too, don't we? Oh, we do. We have a new segment coming up uh, in a few minutes. And, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, let me double check on the segment before we get this sucker up here. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, I do believe Tricky Ricky is not involved in this episode. Uh oh! Uh, I think he uh, kind of pushed out a little bit and had some things to do or or something like. I I, I I'm not you know don't hold me to this because I'm not a hundred percent sure but I'm about to find out right now though, and let's see. Uh-oh. No uh, problem. If if he isn't on it, we'll just still call it Tricky Ricky and the Enforcer because uh, with heroes and heels because uh, well that's what the fucking promo says. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna fucking change it. <laughs> But uh, yeah, those guys. Last time we had them on, uh, they did an, an awesome bang up job. A uh, lot of information. I agree, man. Uh, they were they were really really on their on their game, man. And they're they're good back and forth too. So they 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 counterpoint well. Yeah. So this is definitely the fucking. Uh, I just I just did a quick listen, man. It's definitely the one where uh, the uh, tricky Ricky decides not to show up for the show. But and... it's still worth a listen because he's still got some information. I think a lot oh, of yeah. it's the info- a lot of it's about Royal Rumble. Yeah, and the predictions he made and such some other so, things. Uh, yeah, so listen, listen up tight because here comes the heroes and heels with just <laughs> the enforcer. Because Trigger, he's a bitch. Wrestling fans, are you ready? It's time for Heroes and Heels with Tricky Ricky and the Enforcer. What's going on, my fellow wrestling fans, and welcome to the show. Uh, we appreciate the lesson. Um, as always, this is Heroes and Heels. I am the Enforcer and my trusty sidekick. Oh, that's right. <clears throat> He's not here today, recovering from uh, vaginal rejuvenation surgery. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, he actually uh, was having hernia surgery from trying to lift the enforcer's big balls out of his way. A little lightweight. But, um, so, to, uh, well, let's, let's just start it with, first and foremost, fuck the NFL. If, uh... If y'all don't know what I'm talking about, then you're not a member of the Who That Nation, but I guess that's another podcast or another whole show about bitching and moaning. But then there's wrestling. So um, let's jump into that a little bit. Not sure exactly when you guys will be hearing this, probably after the Rumble, but I'm going to throw it out there, uh, some predictions, um, who I'd like to see, who I think is going to win, stuff like that. So, uh... We'll go with the championship matches. Uh, ladies first. Uh, Ronda Rousey and Sasha Banks. No fucking way they let Rousey lose. So, got to go with her. Um, Becky Lynch and Asuka. I'd love to see Asuka win it. Fair, clean. Is it going to happen? Uh, if it if it hasn't already turned into a triple threat, I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't. And if it doesn't, Charlotte will definitely interfere and fuck up a good match. Um, AJ beating Daniel Bryan. I'd love to see it. Not going to happen. Daniel hit him in the nuts or some other bullshit. 
not really feeling his new character. It's, uh, you know, you're a health food junkie, you know, uh, whatever the fuck you want to call it. But you're a dick. I don't know. Then you turn around and uh, we got Brock and Finn Balor. No fucking way they let Finn beat Brock. Would I love to see it? Yeah. I mean, any fucking body besides Brock with the fucking title. And uh, Braun Strowman, um, from what I'm hearing and reading, you know, on the, the wrestling websites, rumors and stuff like that, um, they're not ready for Brock to drop the title. And they don't want Braun to look any weaker by losing another match to Brock. So there you have it. Um, the Royal Rumble, I'm going with Drew McIntyre. Is that who I want to see win? No, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, do I think that we'll see any any surprise entrance? Uh, of course. Uh, what I want to see, would love to see, like, indie stars, you know, from the independent circuit that's really fucking shit up right now. What we're going to see, fucking gold dust, cane, you know, fucking guys like that that, you know, part-timers, just for the whole nostalgic feel. Um, and that's about it, the Royal Rumble in a nutshell right there, you know. Um, uh, not really wrestling news. Um, the whole, you know, for my pop collectors out there, I've seen some glam shots of the new ones coming out. There's a badass Randy Orton. Charlotte Flair, a Batista, another Ric Flair, styling and profiling. <laughs> and uh, so definitely looking forward to those. And uh, as far as the Rumble, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping to see something shocking. But it, it's it's been pretty much status quo as of late with uh, with them guys. You know, it's the same old shit. Um, TNA's basically moves their self even further from competing like with the WWE, now they're on like a sporting channel or some shit, you know, sporting goods and outdoors, I don't know, it's like Cabela had a fucking, uh, a network, basically, so now it's like on Friday night at like fucking 10 o'clock, some bullshit, you know, still some hidden talent there that makes it watchable, but it's getting far and wide in between, and uh, no new news on the AEW yet, uh, I did see that Neville signed not really understanding the new name, Pac. Fuck, I don't know. Maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong. Maybe it's an English word or something. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that, you know, white wrestlers have already been using Pac as a name. So, but we'll see how that goes. That's really the only signing that I've seen. And, uh, but still definitely looking forward to it. They're building one hell of a roster, you know. Rumors of uh, Goldberg possibly uh, working a few dates for him, you know, to, to get the company up and running love to see that shit uh, I'd love to see him and fucking Jericho who's already signed fucking go at it you know classic classic shit but we will see so since I'm you know by myself I really don't want to talk to myself for 10 minutes or so straight so uh, I'll go ahead and cut this one short and like I said we appreciate you listening if you are listening uh, if you're a first time listener it can only get better from here uh, if you're a two-time listener, hey, we appreciate it. And uh, go ahead and enjoy the rest of the show. Uh, the the M Hog Podcast, you know, Metal Hand of God, they actually know what the fuck they're doing when it comes to podcasts. So enjoy the rest of their show. And catch you next time on Heroes and Heels. Out. All right, next time, remember, if you feel like you're stuck in the corner and can't get off the ropes, you know where to turn for the right information. So join us next time in the next installment of Heroes and Heels with Tricky Ricky and the Enforcer. (laughs) Holy shit, can I just say that the Enforcer really pulls out like the the heel aspect of this fucking show, like he yeah. he really doesn't give two shits about Tricky Ricky, right? Like uh, what what so happened? Good. You know what? I feel bad for him because I mean that's that's a bad type of surgery to have. Yeah, hernia surgery is pretty rough, but you know, I mean, stop picking up big man's balls. Well, you know that it happens. I guess I don't know. I've, it's never never you know. Thank don't, God, cross my path. Yeah, you know? I know. I have a hard enough time peeing. Exactly so. right. I, I same way, dude. Same <laughs> fucking way.
Ah, Same but yeah, way. awesome segment. I dig it. Heroes and heels. Plus, uh, listen to this. Go check out. Uh, go to Facebook. Uh, go check out Heroes and Heels Facebook page. Yes, please like uh, that. Give it a like. Go go post go, some stuff. Go talk to these guys. Yeah, they they know their shit. Uh, go put some comments up there. Especially if you're a big you wrestling fan, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's gonna be good stuff, man. Good stuff. Oh man. Well, it's just time flies, doesn't it? It does, dude. I didn't realize it was this long. Um, but yeah, is it like we've been doing this uh, episode for quite some time. Uh, I think we're gonna head out and do some other things. You know, like uh, we, got, we got a lot of stuff to get organized. We got a lot of shit coming up. Uh, <laughs> Wayne's got some stuff organized. It's it's all out there, man, in the ether and the interweb. It's all happening. Yeah. You know? Um, just, so just know guys that the MHOG podcast is growing leaps and bounds and our next guest that's coming on the show, which let me uh, make sure I get this correct. Like I always do. We have, you know, we have guests that come on and, uh, we actually have two really cool ones. Uh, Carrie mean is coming on the show who was a uh, Frylock from, uh, Aqua Teen hunger force. Uh, nice. he'll be on the show. And then we have uh, my son running in here. Hey, man. That's what he does. Oh, we're supposed to have Matt David from uh, Southern Brutality as well. Oh, well, very cool. What? Very cool. What, dude? You're in here with me. I I, I see you're in here with me. <laughs> I like how you just ran in here and shut the door like, Dad! Like, something happened. Like, like the again, house is on fire again, or something. that's cute until he's 16. Then it's just weird. Well, if he should, I, I really hope he doesn't run in and slam the door and go, Dad, I'm in here with you. Or, really? No, but the weird part is his voice isn't going to change. Come here, buddy. What did you just say? <laughs> I think he just said, fuck a what? What did you say? You said on purpose. What did I say? What? 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 Yeah, okay. Bad father, bad father, bad, bad father. He's they're gonna love him when he gets into school. Yeah, oh yeah, they will. Especially yeah, when he, detention. especially especially when he calls the teacher an old bitch. Because <laughs> that because that's what teach uh, his mother taught him. That's uh, right. Anyway, uh, yeah. So that's it for the this to the, this basing show today. Uh, I appreciate everybody for coming on the show. Um, and and of off course, the show. You know, I got. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's pulling. BCCs. BCCs up in this motherfucker. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so anyway, guys, this is going to be a weird ending because I got a kid pulling my microphone away from me every five seconds. Uh, but uh, you guys, thank you guys. Uh, I was your host, Wayne. I'm the rum guy. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. Metal, metal, metal. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs>